Hi, let's have a view to the McDrone McBase data and how we cope with that. We do have the McDrone data tool, that is that one here, and you can import our raw data, so you cannot directly access the raw data and work with that, so you need to process that via this tool. You can either import the McBase raw data or the McDrone raw data. I like to show you both. So with the McDrone, it directly shows you how the flight of the drone was. You can do some different uh, um, analysis on that track detection. So it's computing uh, the tracks and cutting out everything that is a turning maneuver. So that makes no sense for magnetic data. You can apply some filtering and then you can export that into different formats. Uh, for the moment, let us export into CSV. So then I can better show you what uh, what is inside the raw data. So after we exported that, we should have a CSV file here. When we open it, we can see many values and that is basically the timestamp, an internal timestamp, x, y and z of sensor 1, x, y and z of sensor 2, x, y and z of the acceleration sensor, uh, an internal temperature as well as latitude, longitude, altitude, number of satellites, the quality level of the GPS and the GPS time that is universal so that you can use for correlating data with other sensors or information. So that is for the McDrone. Um, so let us also have a look to McBase data. So when we load MacBase data, it doesn't show any track because MacBase should stand still. Computing makes no sense because there's no track detection needed. And if we export that into a raw data output again, then we're getting a second CSV file. Uh, that's just for reference so that you see what is in the uh, what is in the raw data for the MacBase. So uh, again, we do have an internal timestamp. We have X, Y, and Z of sensor one, and we only have one sensor, so there is no second sensor. Again, uh, X, Y, and Z, uh, that is used to make sure the MacBase is always standing at the same point. And then again, temperature, latitude, longitude, altitude, number of satellites, the quality level, and the GPS time again, that will be used to really correlate MacBase and McDrone data. Now let's do the real work. If we go back and load the McDrone data again, yeah, we're getting our flight pattern here. We can compute the thing. And, um, but more important is uh, this area here. So we like to integrate the MacBase data. So we click that, we select the MacBase data. It is loaded, imported, and selected for uh, correlating the data. Now we are computing all the tracks we apply some filtering. So standard wise, there's low pass filter, a moving median, and we um, export that now into the OXO64 format so that we can use our software Magneto to further process all the data. We also get um, two graphs at the end of the export, and that is um, a preview of the uh, magnetic data as well of uh, the correlation between um, MacBase and McDrone. So this is the first um, magnetic view to the data. You, so we can see there are some objects or anomalies here in the ground. And there's a second one, that is the MacBase reference information. So this shows the uh, overall readings of the MacBase. So there are two peaks. And um, the um, green bars show where we had McDrone data recorded. So, and our software is always looking if this fits, if those bars would be shifted and extending the MacBase data, so then there would be an error and uh, processing would not be possible. So, um, all that could be stored in the same uh, test file or test folder again. So then you have all the information. Uh, we don't do it at the moment. So I'll close all that. What we like to do is to work with that file for a moment. So we are starting the uh, Magneto software, open a new project, importing data from our test folder that is here. That is the OXO file. We open that. 
and we're getting a color-coded map uh, with McDrone data and McBase data as reference information already included. So that is your final map. That should be cleared uh, of all temporary noise that you might have in the field.